But, you know, China, Russia, India, Brazil, South Korea, it seems Japan, even New Zealand, a number of big emitters through the Middle East, they're sticking up for their country's view. They're not playing this game. Here in Australia, we've got one small part of the coalition government, the Nats, who seem to be just seeing what they can milk out of this. If the tap's open, they're going to put their cup underneath it. I get it. But Australia's got to have a, an Australian reason for why we're doing what we're doing. To your point earlier, Carolyn. And look, the thing is, I'm always happy to be more productive. I'm always happy to do things, you know, we should reduce pollution wherever we can. I, I don't have any difficulty with that as a as a broader notion. But you know the No for example not. The, the West Australia, we went to an election in March and we had a energy policy which ended up being labelled as a green energy policy and part of it was a uh, renewables infrastructure project, part of it was closing a coal mine and part of it was net zero government emissions by 2030. And we got hammered on it. Now, it, uh, people understand the difference between federal and state politics, that's for sure. But in the last federal election, it was, um, it was Queensland that, that really got us over the line, the support for Adani, um, and obviously thank you very much to uh, Bob Brown and his climate convoy going up to Queensland. That there won us Queensland. Yep. And then Western Australia was also able to hold its high watermark. Now, we've got three seats that, you know, um, that Labor are really keeping an eye on in Swan, Hasluck and, and Pearce. You know, we need to have policies which are going to be able to help us hold those seats. Now, given the uh, result in the state election and, and the absolute disgust there was at that uh, green energy policy, let's just call it that, um, you know, I, I think the government is... Uh, is a little foolhardy, perhaps, in thinking that, that net zero 2050 mm. is going to go down like a dream in WA. I, I don't really understand how it's going to go down like a dream in Queensland, and I don't know where they're going to pick up no. these other additional seats if we lose seats here and in Queensland for, for us to hold government. Look, I understand this is very um, this is very popular in Wentworth and it's very popular in Warringah, uh, Warringah, but, you know, there are other parts of Australia that are more broadly affected. And... I, look, I just, I don't quite understand it and I don't quite understand how the government walks back its position in 2019 without looking like total hypocrites. Like I said earlier, I am totally open-minded. I'm more than happy to be yeah. convinced, um, but I don't understand um, the mechanics of it substantially and I don't understand necessarily the benefit of it politically. We are coming out of this COVID crisis. The things that should be front of mind should be our economic recovery and it should be national security, particularly insofar as it relates to China. That there, in my view, should be what we should be focusing on in this election. And I think everyone's a little tired of climate elections.